Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. As you guys can see, I am currently 100% in the Halloween mood. So that is going to be today's message. It's going to be inspired by Halloween. There are three card piles to choose from, but they're going to be from different decks. So the first pile from messages from your guides is going to be the nightmare before Christmas. Please excuse Nova popping her head up. She's very, very clingy the last few days. She's normally pretty clingy. Dobermans are known as Velcro dogs, but lately it's been a little bit more increased than usual. Second pile is the zombie tarot. And the third pile is horror tarot. So take as much time as you need, pause this video, go get yourself a pumpkin spice latte or a cinnamon spice tea, oh my god, put a little drop of almond milk in there, whatever it is that suits you best, get cozy, grab a blanket, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Alright my love, so if you chose the Nightmare Before Christmas tarot deck, this is your reading. I'm gonna allow myself to channel as I always do, as I love to do, and simply bless the deck with your energy. So do me a favor and try your best to connect with the energy of the tarot. Angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe, what is the energy that needs to be received by those who chose this deck? What is the message? protect the viewer. I send them love. The blue jay might be very significant for this pile. So if someone can, if you chose this pile, please leave a message down below on what the blue jay symbolizes. Also, the word um, nourishment is definitely coming through, taking care of yourself in all the many different ways. That that needs to happen for you. I'm gonna, I feel really called to randomly pull instead of allowing the cards to jump out. One. I'm feeling the number five for you, also seven. And then one more. Okay, so let's roll our sleeves up and let's dive right in, shall we? Please and thank you. First card to jump out, wow, is six of wands or six of candles. Second card we have five, six, seven, eight of needles, eight of swords. Third card for you, we have six of cups. And I'm gonna pull these over now, but share with them, share you, share with, share them with you <laughs> shortly after. Okay. I wanna start with the Six of Wands. Is that what I wanna start off with? No, I wanna do, I wanna bring in the Page of Cups or Page of Wands here. So hopefully you guys can see this, but we have this little baby here with a candle young juvenile energy, six of cups, eight of swords, and six of wands. Spirit is referencing something of your past, past connection coming up. This might be a past interest or past passion. They want you to go back to that part of your life and see what you can take from it. There's this um, message, this prophecy about how going back into the past is not a negative thing. If you're not staying in that space. It teaches us a lot about how far we've come. It teaches us a lot about lessons so that we can take the wisdom that we've learned through those lessons, those experience from those lessons, and make sure that we're not repeating them in the present moment. So I'm wondering if there's a new project or a new passion that is being infused into your moment now that Spirit says, before you embark on this journey, make sure that you are A, not repeating mistakes from the past, or B, that you're incorporating the lessons of the past into the present moment and into the future and beyond. They see you being very accomplished. Um, I'm also hearing for some of you, 
not that this is bad, but be very careful about your ego and not letting your ego rule. I heard like rule the ship and I also heard the word calamity. There's a message here about being very cautious about narcissistic people, people who are constantly needing to bring the energy and the vibes around them. Make sure that you are not being someone who is doing that. And if that is the case, you need to take a little extra time for yourself to disconnect and self-nourish because you're needing like external validation and spirit doesn't want that for you. When you start finding that you need to have this external validation all the time where you need people to celebrate you and tell you, and it's all well and good, don't get me wrong, it's all well and good to get words of affirmation to support you, especially as you're going on an endeavor or especially if you're closing up a significant chapter in your life, but don't wait for that. And don't let that be the only thing that is pouring into you is a really strong message that someone is coming through here. Somewhat spirit is talking about like graduation and celebration for you. And they're they're watching you really kind of put yourself together after a few seasons in your life where you felt really empty and achy or you carried yourself through it, even though emotionally you didn't feel like you could do that. Hi, Nova. Can you go sit down? Go sit down. Go sit down. Down. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, she's back. <laughs> she's like, oh, I'll sit down on your lap. She's her. She pretty much weighs the same as me, so her pushing through could knock this entire situation over. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Spirit is really acknowledging the emotional, I don't want to say emotional toll, but essentially the emotional toll and really wants to recognize the fact that you, it, it was because of you, I'm hearing, it was because of you that you are where you're at right now and they celebrate that. They think that that is a, a testament to your strength and your your desire to move past, to move beyond adversity and struggle. And I, for some of you guys, I'm hearing you saw like caution tape and other people kind of rerouted their self around it and you were like, why is this tape here? I'm going to find out and you ended up paving away for other people. It's a very specific message, but because you were so quote unquote stubborn, because you were set in your way and because you didn't accept no as your answer, you ended up opening the door not only for yourself, but for others. And that's a very specific message for someone who chose this pile. Spirit really wants to acknowledge you as a leader, you as an advocate and you as a path paver. If this is not something that you've already done, it's something that you're presently being called to do, or it's going to be a major part of your path and your journey here in life, and Spirit is very, very excited about that for you. Even your ancestors are rallying around you. There's this big question mark right now about what the future holds. For some of you guys, um, Spirit is asking you to stay present in the moment. Um, and that you may not necessarily, you can plan as much as, as far as you can into the future. But the truth is, is that life will ebb and flow the way that it will. And to trust yourself, especially with the page of candles here. Some of you guys feel like you might be unprepared, that you're too young, that you're too naive, that you're too, but I actually heard that you're, that you're gifted. I heard that you're far, you're, you're advanced in some way. So if there's anybody that can pave a new way and and start a new chapter and just have a breakthrough, it's that same, it's that energy of not naivety, but like the belief that this doesn't have to be this way, that I can do things differently. And because you have that spark, that courage, that confidence, you're going to be the one to do it. Absolutely. Let's look at these other cards here. We have the Three of Swords. This is, again, recognizing pain and suffering and ache. This this is, as soon as I see this, I'm hearing, like, a, a really strong need to not repeat patterns from the past. That can be easier said than done. Some, sometimes there might be an empty ache, like a spot within you that you may say yes to certain things or yes to certain energies or people because there's that part of you that might be need like need need validation or need, need love in that in that space and spirits like let's not let's not repeat that find i'm hearing like find a new way 
And that might actually be a message here for someone, someone who, if you are being called to go back to something of the past, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be long, if this is a relationship, now, now we're entering into relationship territory. If this is a relationship connection, be really careful about energy from the past and not having to juggle. You would actually do better on your own. Nova, you got to sit down. Down. All the way. All the way. You would do better on your own. And I know that that really sucks sometimes, especially with the hermit card. Sometimes there's a feeling of disappointment with being alone for too long in isolation it actually can create physical and emotional torment and pain and suffering but spirit again wants to acknowledge the fact nova come on bro sit down down i can't i can't even explain to you guys how clingy she is and it's like not enough that she's sitting on my feet you know she has to be like on my lap i love her to death but um, okay, Page of Swords is here. Yes, yeah, so there's information, some type of word. I, it's interesting, too. I just heard bondage, and then as soon as I heard bondage, I realized this chain here. So be really careful, guys. Be take. There's this message, this word of caution, especially if this is connections and relationships, of um, who or what you want commitment from. You might not necessarily get what you want from that person, the bondage from them is going to be you kind of dragging them along. If that's something that you are okay with juggling, then then you can you're free to choose that, of course. But if this is something that you are conscious and aware of that you do not want to continue to repeat this pattern that you don't want to repeat, the fact then look at their past behaviors, their past patterns because that's most likely to resurface and reemerge. Also, don't forget for one second that the Page of Wands here is notorious for being physically drawn to something but not having the the capacity to nourish, to support it, and to stay with it for too long. This person burns out very quickly. So if that's not something that you in the future will be able to deal with, then when this person's in attraction to you begins to waver, then this is not going to be the right thing for you you and you might you might have already sensed that um spirit is saying that you might actually need to take a little bit more time to heal and pull yourself together even with the eight of swords that can be really tough but it's very cathartic and healing to to take that time for yourself in order to give yourself what you need because there might be an empty ache a feeling a sense it doesn't even need to come from a person who has come from a broken home or anything like that. I have many friends that are products of healthy mar like healthy marriage, healthy love, healthy relationship dynamics, and the fact that they can't find it in this world and they're actively searching for it creates the struggle. But really hold off and 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 I don't want to say wait for what you deserve, but prepare for what it is that you're just what of uh, what you're deserving of because. There is a there's spirit says that if you needed validation um, and affirmation that what you want exists, the six of wands is the card of you're going to find it. Six of wands also has always notoriously been my PTSD card, which means that this person is riding out of the battle, out of the battlefield, and they get they get the reward for having gone through the war. And for some of you guys, you're picking yourself up after a period where you are on the battlefield, whether that be in your career, whether that be in your health, whether that be in your love life, relationship, whatever the case is. But there's a lot, especially with the Three of Swords here. So there's a lot of energy here that's saying, listen, even with the Two of Presents, Two of Pentacles here, it's like you're waiting for something to pop out and scare the fuck out of you. I get it. Pardon my French. YouTube. Did I say YouTube? French? Yeah, okay. Um, YouTube hates when I... I have like a foul mouth um i get punished for that but that's just my authentic throat chakra realness just moving um but yeah so you're wait yeah you're waiting for something to kind of pop out and but honestly i don't i don't know if i necessarily see that happening it's conditioning of the past or what you've experienced in the past already so just be hyper focus on not hyper focus of that but be aware of it so that you're not blocking yourself yeah ace of wands interesting so something does want to spark up here 
This is the Ace of Candles. There, there is some type of new chapter, new energy, and the Bluebird just revisited again. Oh, we lost the card. Dang it, it fell on Nova's <laughs> on her paw. Now she's going to be reactivated again. That's so funny. Yeah, Ten of Swords, guys. This is rock bottom. Rock bottom. Do you see the pin cushion? It's a little pin, a pumpkin pin cushion, which is so cute. This feels like, um, again, you are expecting the worst, but the worst is behind you. So that's extra confirmation that the worst is behind you. And, or for some of you guys, a lot of you guys, you're ending a chapter. And before you begin the next chapter, which there's a lot of ambition, a lot of fire here, there is a little piece of you that needs to kind of um, decompress for a little bit before you begin again. See, I told you she would be reactivated. You're like a solar powered wind up toy that <laughs> just has no chill. Okay, go sit down. Thank you. All right, my loves, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Forgive um, me and Nova for our chaos today. But um, I really hope that this reading resonated. And I'm going to move on to the second pile which is the zombie tarot. All right, my loves, if you chose the zombie tarot, this is your mid Halloween, midway to Halloween <laughs> reading, um, messages from the guides. So thank you for being here, of course, first, first and foremost. I'm gonna ask that you Try your best to connect with the tarot, connect with the energy so that you can receive the message that is meant to be given to you now for your highest and greatest good. What needs to be seen and heard and felt by those who chose the zombie tarot? Interesting. For you guys, the number that is coming through is six and the number eight. So it could be 666 or 888. Okay, just like pile number one, actually, we have the Ten of Swords here. The Ten of Swords is actually showing up um, earlier this morning in Bahati Love Notes, too, as well. So the, the energy of Ten of Swords is here. That's the energy of Rock Bottom. We also have Six of Swords and Four of Cups reversed. And then we have two of pentacles, six of swords, I'm sorry, six of pentacles, and three of cups reversed. Again, this is the zombie tarot. So give me a moment here. I want to sit with this for a little bit. Spirit is wanting to free you from a situation that they feel is like completely unfair and off balance. They feel like you're owed so much more here. Someone is getting too much from you and they really want to disconnect you from this. Or if this is not a person or a relationship, if finances is an issue, they are trying to get you to stop spending so much. Someone just got really um, open. Like someone, I don't know why I'm hearing like a, like a coconut and the spirit is showing me a coconut because you're, you're very stubborn in this. Like... It's like I, I'm seeing spirit trying to crack this coconut open and you refuse to crack open. So the, the, the harm in this is that if you stay in this space for too long, this is going to continue to drain. Um, I just heard spirit say that there's a time and a place to let something go and you, the time and the place is now and you're resisting that. And the more that you resist it, the more that this is pulling from you. For some of you guys, you want to be set. You don't want to move from a situation. So this could be your current home, your current house or an apartment. It's it's too much. You're not able to balance it all. Financially, you're not able to balance it and you're afraid to cut cut this cord and, and disconnect and move forward. However, if you did do that, life would even out. The adjustment period would take care of itself and life would even, even, it, even out. 
for some of you, this is actual relationship here. This is someone that you want to see forever with, but I don't know if spirit sees the same thing too. Especially with three of cups here, this is someone who is quote unquote doing too much. So they may not be the most loyal type of energy. I actually saw that in the first pile. If this is a relationship connection, that really concerns me. Actually, this energy overall concerns me. I'm a person of balance. I was born actually on the autumn equinox, was which is the perfect balance between day and night. And this concerns me that this energy is really off balance. If I saw this, I would swoop in real quick and start cleaning it up. There's a stubbornness here again with Four of Cups reverse where you, you're not really wanting to free yourself from it. If this is an energy that you've just, that you've just already, if you've just, like if this relates to you and this is something that you're presently walking out of, Spirit is acknowledging the the fact that you are, you're, work, you're working right now on fixing it and healing it. There's some things too here that like, let's say you're, this is a relationship or a business or something, there's something here that is like not fixable. That the more that you try to put your energy into fixing it, if you stay in that situation, it just won't even itself out. It, it won't balance itself out. It's too much. Or you're the only person giving into this connection and that's what needs to stop. And as soon as you end it, as soon as you drop it forward, I mean, there's this hope of moving forward and that the more effort you put into it, the more energy you put into it, the more you try to bait it, the more that it, maybe it'll be more open and receptive to giving to you or vice versa. But it just, that's just, that doesn't seem to be the case. As soon as you dead it and end it and you start to allocate your resources in the way that it is, that's more appropriate where it belongs, then we're going to start seeing things kind of smooth out. But I want to say, too, that this is not an easy message right now. If you're at the halfway point in the year or in life, this is an assessment on what is working for you and what isn't working for you. For some of you guys, you actually need rest. And that's what needs to be ended here is the, is the overproduction of something, the overdoing of something. For some of you guys, I actually got like adrenal, like adrenal glands, like your fight or flight is constantly... Or it could be your kidneys or something health related that is just over being overly stimulated here by something. You know this already and yet you're trying to, instead of follow the rules or do what you know you need to do in order to take care of yourself, you're trying to balance it out. Oh, well, I could just have this but and then this. And it's like, no, that's not actually how it works. You have to kind of cut something out of your diet or out of your life so that your body can balance itself out, which it will. If you give it the tools, if you give it the resources, that's the only time that it'll be able to do that. But if not, it will continue to struggle. And if anything, it'll actually make it worse because you're just giving your your body, your mind, your spirit something else to adjust to. And your body, your mind, and your spirit or your emotions is exhausted right now. For some of you guys, this is people who are too still for too long and it's time for you to get up. And it's going to be really hard for you to find the ambition and the motivation, but you got to do it for you. You have to do it for you. And you'd be surprised how getting out again and being active again will trickle into all the other areas of your life and impact it in a positive way. I'm Spirit is showing me the coconut here, so someone is very, yeah, oh goodness. Spirit is showing me the co the coconut here. So someone is, even as I'm saying this reading to you guys, you, you might be like, no, I don't want to hear this right now. Or, okay, I've already heard this. And I, I totally get that. But again, remind, remind a reminder that Spirit is looking at the situation as a coconut. Really difficult to crack open. But once you do, there's a plethora of nourishment on the inside of this coconut. And don't you want to get to that place? Having said that, Four of Wands is here, and that is the place that once you crack open and once you let this go and once you, even now I think about it, the amount of effort that it takes sometimes to crack open a coconut, if I just had an axe and chopped it in half, I'd be, that'd be so much easier than me constantly whacking this situation. So some of you guys need to use the tools that are given to you in order to make this next season in your life more easy, more effortless, and actually flowing 
Yep, Sun card. This is exactly what it is that you've been wanting, that you know is the next chapter in your life, but because you won't let this thing go or because you won't dead this certain pattern, it's stopping you from being seen by this helicopter. It's stop it, stopping this savior thing from coming in and quote unquote saving you, whatever that looks like. The next cards we have is actually three of swords reversed. So this could be for some of you guys in literally what you're eating, what you're ingesting, your diet, your lifestyle, but also it's what is eating your heart, what is eating your energy, what is creating an ache or a pain. You let you being called away from it. Are you disconnecting yourself from it and refusing to try to make this work is one of the best blessings because three of wands the the actual blessing, the gift that it is that you're looking for will come in. Do you trust letting this thing go? I, I actually believe that you've heard plenty of signs already with the Hierophant card here. You've already heard plenty of signs and received many different signals and even support and resources to help get you to where it is that it is that you belong. But the thing is, is like, are you open to, to that? Or are you being stubborn, difficult and just be like, no, I'm just going to continue to try and make it this all of this work or I'm going to continue to feed the hand like that keeps biting me every time I put my hand in the cage this, this dog <laughs> chomps onto my wrist and wrangles it and I but I just you know I'm gonna hold on you know and what if you know what if you found that situation that keeps hurting you a new home because it's not that you have nothing to prove to anybody speaking of dogs here comes Nove Oh, hi. Down. In the first reading, she was kind of pushing her way through. Down all the way. Also, she will fart in the background, which I don't know if you guys heard that, but as she sat down, she farted. So, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is not a message from spirit. <laughs> it is, however, a message from Nova's butt. Okay, so... Yeah, back, and that's Franklin snorting on the other side, so there's a lot going on in this office today. Anyways, guys, I, I really feel that whatever excess is here, once you start to disconnect from it, the, the, okay, one final thing before I let you guys go, I really want to tell you that there's this overarching message right now where Spirit is saying, don't try to make this work, you know? Someone's going to hear, okay... I'm doing I'm doing too much in this situation. So I'm just gonna do a little less. And spirit's just like, actually no, because you know you need to chop this off. You know you need to dead it. You know you need to end it. There is no, okay, I'm just gonna do a little. There is no, because something here is so extreme that even the little bit that you're gonna try to make it work is still too much because it's a, a pattern or it's a history or a buildup. So if this is a relationship reading, I would, if, and you're not being used, I'm sorry to put it blatantly out there, then this is not your reading. If this is not, if you're not having health issues or over, like an overproduction of something or an underproduction of something, this is not your reading. If this is not a work ethic mentality or a lack of amb ambition and burnout, this is not your reading. This is an energy of too much of something or not enough of something and, and the inability to accept it and to completely dead what isn't working and do incorporate what will. And there is a hyper focus that you know what this is or you can go to the place that can tell you or teach you or show you what needs to be done so that this is balanced and there you will find bliss, happiness, joy, vitality, marriage, connection, reciprocity, the list goes on and on. So that is your reading, my loves. Pretty forward, as it always is. I thank you so much for being here. And now I'm going to move on to the Horror Tarot, which, wait till you see this deck. It is so dope. <laughs> it is so dope, but it is not for everybody. But what is? All right, I'll talk to you guys in the, uh, in the next video. All right, my loves. If you chose the Horror Tarot 
this is your reading. Now, I want to say that this is one of the more darker tarot decks that I've ever had, but I, I genuinely love it. Um, I do have a backstory with horror um, actually being very healing for me. If you guys would like to hear that story, I'd be very open to sharing it with you. It would probably be like a five minute long video, but um, for the most part, I'm going to ask that if you chose this deck, you're probably open-minded or you're called to it and you might be uncomfortable and that is okay. Nova, sit down. That's another thing that I have to share with you is that we have um, Nova Bean and Franklin in here. Nova is very farty and Franklin is very snorry. So if you hear any farts or snorts, I promise you it's not me, it's the dogs. For real though, for real. You know, and they're like, oh no, it's the dog did it, but it's actually the person, I promise you. Or if it is me, I'll let you know. But I'm mo nine times out of ten, it's going to be the dogs. Anyways, um, yeah, thank you guys for choosing the Horror Tarot. This is going to be your reading, but also keep an open mind because this is one of the darker tarot decks that it is that I own. It is inspired by horror films. So having said that, let's go ahead and dive right in. Angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe, from the divine, I thank you so much for this moment in time. I'm actually getting like warm, cozy, ooey gooey, sweet um, energy from this. It actually feels very, very sweet, like syrup, like maple syrup. And I'm actually getting a vision of like pancakes and waffles and, and butter and just like laughter and warmth and happiness. It's so funny that that's the message that's initially coming through, even with the horror tarot. It feels really, really good. For some of you guys, you need to hear the words quality time. There's going to be, I don't know if you're manifesting it or you're bringing it into your life, but there's really like this warm, this warmth that's coming through. This is actually so far. I mean, who knows what this tarot is going to show. I, I'm going to have to take my time. Whoa. And right away we saw Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is the card. This is literally, even though this is a stack of coffins, Ten of Pentacles is the family that gets together every Sunday at this big old kitchen table and everyone's working together to um, to contribute to breakfast and someone's squeezing oranges. Another person is whipping up butter and someone else has syrup and someone's making the waffles and someone else is making pancakes and someone's making bacon or whatever it is this is that energy so i'm there's this real warmth that it is that i'm getting from this deck which is so funny and very apropos of spirit to say that um whoever <laughs> picked this card wow guys we have eight of wands is the next card to show up and the emperor okay so we have Eight of Wands and the Emperor here. I'm getting a strong sense that the Emperor knows exactly what it is that they want. So this might be you or someone else. And it's going to be clearly stated, clearly known. There's not going to be any type of second guessing here. I'm getting a strong sense that everything right now is... I just heard an honor to you, an ode to you. That's very, very specific. It feels like you're being celebrated. I haven't flipped over the other cards right now, but it genuinely feels like you're being celebrated. I don't, to me, this is like how someone would go to an altar, light a candle and honor the, those who have come or go, go somewhere to honor someone. And, but in this case, I actually see this as your angels and your guides are honoring you. Oh my gosh. And then we have the lovers here. Beautiful beautiful energy and then we have the eight of cups interesting it's interesting because with the eight of cups i don't see this as a negative thing walking away from something that is creating heartache pain and suffering although of course this can represent the things that is that you walked away from but imagine what is that you're walking into but the eight of cups is like this feels very celebratory, even though you might not necessarily feel it in the moment, especially if you're coming out of a breakup or something. Honestly, if this is a love relationship connection, which I wouldn't be surprised of, especially with the lover's card, the emperor and the eight of wands, 
this is going to be the awakening that walking away from this relationship brings you right into the right relationship that is going to be the one. If this is not a relationship reading, this is like entering into a season in your life for all of your needs. My love, emphasis on all of your needs. All of your needs are being met. All of them. Okay? I... I for some of you guys, you might be hearing that as like sexual in nature, but it, it's really not. Even with the lover's card here, even though this card can feel very sexual by looking at it in the imagery, this is like literally all of your your needs, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, all of them are being met. You're entering into a season of your life that you are, I, I don't know how else to say it, like you're, all your needs are being met. Fine. That is what it is. Eight of Cups is you there might have been a lot of disappointment in the past emotional like like situations that you've that have forced you to move away from only for you to walk into everything that is that you've ever hoped wished for wanted needed and then some let me look at the top of this reading whoa i can't i don't even want to tell you <laughs> oh my god it's because i'm such wow i'm done okay wait <laughs> like this is what i'm talking about you guys so at the start of this reading i was getting like waffles and syrup and warmth and just everything could there be a more positive reading the card that i just pulled i'm sorry the empress so we have the empress we have the emperor we have the lovers we have the nine of cups missy we have the eight of wands we have ten of pentacles this is literally happily ever after all over it I'm not making this up we have nine of cups when I tell you guys I started this reading and I'm like yo I'm getting like just so syrup like syrup and warmth and a glass of milk and an orange juice and f bowls of fruit and Sunday Sunday slow days and warm and cozy and everybody's all together and we're just happily ever after I actually feel like the ten of pentacles is way better than the ten of cups showing although I wouldn't be surprised if the ten of cups was to show up because the ten of pentacles isn't going anywhere ten of cups of course it's that emotional feeling but the ten of pentacles for me as an earth sign gives me security that I can trust and it's not just the coldness of the security of like, okay, we have the house, we have the, the property, we have the food, we have our phones. We have nine of cups here, which is fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, the, the fulfilling of this cup. I actually prefer this over ten of cups showing up with the ten of pentacles and all these cards because I feel like it's kind of like what my boyfriend said to me the other day. He was like, I'm just waiting for... The bubble like this dream to pop he feels like our relationship is literally like a dream and it really is we are just I don't like to share it too much on the internet because you'd be surprised and I believe in like evil eye and evil energy but there's just so much warmth coming from this and there's a lot of love radiating radiating from it you're finally entering into a chapter or you're manifesting perfect harmony perfect alignment i can't believe but i'm so happy i'm here and the confirmation that it's not going anywhere that this is it this is it and eight of cups is if there's some type of any type of ache or suffering i don't see you doing this alone i actually see partnership relationships marriage union harmony alignment happening alongside everything is leading you into this we have the lovers card which is the card of soulmates twin flames the love of your life the partner of your dreams and then we have complementing the empress and the emperor showing up side by side with the eight of wands let me double check that this is the emperor yeah it's the empress she's getting ripped apart in this card but that's beside the point <laughs> It's just because, again, the horror tarot is very, it's the horror tarot. I mean, like, duh. Like, it's not, it's not fluffy. For I, I don't know. I want to see, like, I just want to shuffle some more for you guys. This really wants to jump out, so let's go ahead and vibe with it. Yep, chariot card. Goodbye. Get off my YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love that you guys are here. Um, chariot card. Yeah. I mean, things are moving forward. 
things are moving forward. Do you trust it? I just love it. This is actually making me want some waffles right now. Maybe add some waffles and syrup to your altar. Then we have the hermit card here. I just see this as time away. Yeah, knight of pentacles. I'm not going anywhere. Look, he's like even literally bound. And then we have the ace of swords, which is the message of truth. And protection, honestly. This card is protection. It's not going anywhere. If anything tries to touch it, it's going to get destroyed. This is heaven sent. This is from, from above. And you are being celebrated and rewarded right now. It, it is your time. That is the message that's getting here. You're going to get everything guys, that you wanted. That and more. Nine of cups, ten of pentacles. The lovers, empress, emperor. I mean, eight of wands, tomorrow, right now. You know what I mean? Like, girl. Like, I'm here for it. I love it. So, I mean, let's go ahead and end it on that note. That was the best reading I've ever given, ever. I'm not even kidding. And funny, it came from the horror tarot. But I love that it went to you. Because you deserve it. All right, my loves. I'm sending you guys all of my love. If you pulled this reading, uh, just comment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Down below. Because that's going to be the progression of everything just kind of coming together. That's the energy. That's how we're going to speed into existence. I'm going to go ahead and head off. Bahati Love Notes is up for those of you guys that are subscribed. It's my $15 membership, actually, where I pulled cards for a smaller group. And you can use it for journal prompts, guidance into your everyday. But, of course, it's channel messages from me. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys there. Bye.